It means that there's a code for you to have access to it. And he will not give the code to those revelers, those people of the world. He will only give the code of the keys of David to those who have access to his heart and intimacy. Even Adam and Eve, they made false coverings. You may have had a false covering in your life if you did not feel safe. Listen, everybody has access to it, but they do not access it. Why? Because they don't have the right credentials. They don't have the history with God. They have not made history. They have not gone through the process and they're still stuck in themselves. But today I want to talk about this subject or this realm, okay, about Christ Jesus being my hiding place. And I've been singing this song, you know, for me, just, just like, you know, I'm a bit of an old soul. I got some old, uh, you know, school in me. You know, I love the classics. I, I'm an American classic. I love Mustangs. I love Harleys. I love guns. I love, you know, I love all the types of just throw that out there. All right. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've been I've been thinking about this uh, phrase, this realm called uh, the hiding place. And listen, I'm going to give you a word today that's going to shift you, that's going to bless you, that's going to rock you in Jesus name. So go ahead, give us some hearts and likes and share this on your wall, because, friends, there is no place like the hiding place. There is no place like the secret place. There is no place like the dwelling place. And I'm going to give you some truths, some revelations, and some keys that's going to give you understanding to abide in the secret place. Give you some understanding to abide in the glory realm. Give you some understanding to abide in a place where you will be untouchable. You will be unreachable. You will be uh, uh, far from sin, far from devils, far from the enemy now i know that a lot of place says uh, a lot of people will say oh man there's no such thing as no warfare there's no such thing as you know no demons even jesus dealt with demons while he was on the earth so how are you going to tell me that you can live in a realm right now where you don't do demons if you don't if you're not dealing with demons if you're not going to spiritual warfare then you're probably not maturing you're probably not growing you're probably not being a christian because you're so busy only just being uh you know in the church and just doing church works rather than preaching uh, the gospel and healing and saving and touching the laws and so you know a lot of people are, are always saying oh you know how do you stay in the hiding place how do you stay in the secret place but i'm going to give you some truth here and i know it's going to bless your face and bl uh, bless your life amen go over to psalm 32 here yes we're going to the bible the word of god someone write that down for me here psalm 32 verse six to seven you're gonna like this today all right i've been thinking about this for the last few days i've been singing the song the old school class you are my hiding place and i've just been singing to the lord in the realm of glory and i don't know about you but i need to stay hidden in the lord i need to stay hidden in his presence and i want to tell you this here being hidden in god is not the same as being hidden in your flesh being hidden in the Holy Ghost is not the same as hiding out in your cave in fear from the Philistines and from the Midianites. Hiding in the Lord is not the same from hiding in your fears, hiding and running away from the world in your stress, in your anxiety. You don't want to wake up and get out of your bed coverings. You don't want to get out of your bed and you don't want to face the world because you're so bogged down with shame and stress and anxiety. So you want to kill yourself. So therefore you would rather stay hidden in your flesh and hidden in yourself rather than hidden in the Holy Ghost. Because if you're hidden in Christ, then you are powerful. If you're hidden in Christ, then you are bold. If you're hidden in Christ, then you are filled with the supernatural and you are overflowing from glory to glory. If you're hidden in Christ, then it's no longer you that lives, but it is Christ Jesus that lives through you. If you're hidden in the Lord, then you're not a scared kitty cat. Kitty, kitty, kitty. You're not a scared kitty cat that's hiding under the covers and the shadows of yourself and of your flesh. Are you hearing me? There's a lot of people who are hiding in themselves rather than hiding in Christ. 
There's a lot of people who are hiding in the world rather than being hidden in the Lord. But how can you say, well, Pastor Ben, you know, I'm always in prayer. But how can you tell me that I'm not hidden in the Lord? There's a different dimension. And I'm going to talk to you about this today. Because a lot of people who are still in prayer and their intercessors, they still get hit and attacked with warfare. They're still getting bogged down by the oppression of the world. They're still not themselves. So I want to give you this truth. I've been thinking about this, pondering on this for the last uh, few days about Christ Jesus being my hiding place. So Psalm 32, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, For this cause... Everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. I love this passage. Seek the Lord while he may be found. All right. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Listen, if you seek him, you will find him. All right. Surely follow me in a flood of great waters. They shall not come near him. So even in the turmoils of life, it will not come near you if you find God. If you find God, you will not be hit with the waves and the waters of stress. If you find God, then the devils cannot find you. If you find God, then the enemies cannot find you. Follow me. Verse 7, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Here we go. You are my hiding place. You will preserve me from trouble. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. I'm going to give you some good teaching here this morning or today now. You are my hiding place. So what does that mean? It means that it, uh, there's a, a place of secrecy. It means that there's a place of covering. It means that you are covered. It is concealed. He hides you under his cloak. He hides you under his robe. He hides you, uh, you know, uh, under his manifest presence. So you will be hidden from the attacks of the enemy. You will be hidden from the radar of the devil. You will be hidden from the world and he will hide you because he will protect you. Listen, there's so many things that go on in the world. There's so much craziness madness and to be honest there almost is no security in life they talk about life insurance they talk about car insurance they talk about health insurance they talk about home insurance they talk about all these insurances but there is no insurance like the hiding place of jesus which means that there is no security like eternity there is no security like the presence of god there is no security like being in connection and communion with the eternal creator some of you are so stuck on creation that you're not stuck on the creator, which means that you're always moving with creation and the created realm rather than being caught up and consumed with the eternal everlasting creator. Where is your anchor rooted in? Where's your hiding place? And I believe that in this season, the Lord wants to clothe us. He wants to garment us. He wants to uh, throw his robe on us where we are hidden under the shadow of his wings. Keep following me. You are my hiding place, which means that you're concealed. Uh, in order to, in California, in order to have a, a, a concealed weapons permit, that's what they call it. In order to have carry around a piece, carry around a pistol, a weapon, uh, a gun, in order to carry out, you need a permit, which is called a concealed weapons permit. Follow me. Concealed weapons permit. Which means that you need to go through the process with the government. You need to go through the process and you need to be certified so that you can come into that place of having a concealed weapons permit. But follow me. If you have felonies, if you have uh, certain crimes, if there are certain things going on in your life. And when the government does a check and a background check on you, you cannot be eligible. You cannot have access to a concealed weapons permit, which means that you need to get your life right to be hidden in the Lord, which means that you will get your life right if you are hidden in the Lord, which means that many people want to carry around a gun. They want to carry around a piece. They want to carry around a weapon, but they don't have a permit, which means that you do not have permission to enter in. You do not have permission to have access. 
You do not have permission to stay hidden in that hiding place in that realm of glory because there's certain things that need to be dealt with before you enter in. There's certain things that need to be addressed before you come under that anointing, that authority, and that glory. And so a lot of people, they're walking and carrying around arms, guns, illegally, without a permit. Follow me. Without a permit. And I believe in this season, the Lord wants to give you access to the secret place. He wants to give you access to the glory room. He wants to give you access to uh, the hiding place. Where many people, listen, everybody has access to it, but they do not access it. Why? Because they don't have the right credentials. They don't have the history with God. They have not made history. They have not gone through the process. And they're still stuck in themselves and in yesterday. You follow me? You are my hiding place, which means concealed. God conceals you. He covers you. Listen, I know many of you watching now are on the replay. I know many of you, you had quote-unquote coverings here on earth. Listen, even Adam and Eve, they made false coverings. You may have had a false covering in your life if you did not feel safe. A true covering of the Lord, a true covering of God will make you safe. You will feel safe. There will be absolute trust. I know the Bible says, do not trust in man, trust in God only. But also we're meant to trust in one another harmoniously because Christ is in us. Don't trust the flesh in man, trust the spirit of God in man. And so if you're concealed, if you're under a covering, then that means that you're safe. I know many of you watching, you felt exposed, abused, used, slandered. You felt like you were, uh, all of your business, all of your stuff was put up on blast and on social media. And you were rather uncovered rather than covered. But God is our covering. His presence, His Spirit is our covering. Which means that He conceals us. With a lock and a key, with a safety to be concealed, people of God. It means that there's a code for you to have access to it. And He will not give the code to those revelers, those people of the world. He will only give the code of the keys of David to those who have access to His heart in intimacy. So, how do you have access to the hiding place, to the greater realm of glory of God? By having access, decoding, because intimacy will decode. Intimacy unravels. Intimacy unveils. It is in love that He reveals. Our worship causes Him to reveal. You receive greater revelation by love. And when we worship and when we love and when we surrender, that's when we receive the decoding of what's there. So the secret place of the Most High or the hiding place, it's same terminology, all right? It is concealed and it is a secret. So if you're hidden in that place, follow me. If you're hidden in a place, that means no devil can have access to it. No witch can have access to it. No sickness can have access to it. Follow me. No, no demon can have access to it because they're not in love. So therefore, they cannot decode it and have access to it. And because God is a true father and a true covering, he will not uncover and he will not expose and he will not leave you behind. And he will not bring you to a place so that you will be slandered and mandered and you will be abused and you will be taken advantage of. But he will keep you in a place like a shelter, like a fortress, because Christ Jesus, the glory of God, is your hiding place. Amen. Thank you, Mama Billy. God bless you. Love you. So what does this mean? That means that there's a realm in His glory. There's a realm in His presence. That no devils, no sickness, no sin, no demons, no witches can have access to you. And that's the place that is preserved. Not for the elect and not for the select. But it is preserved for the ones who press in to the more of God. It's preserved for the ones who want the more of Jesus. Keep following me here. You will preserve me from trouble. That word preserve means to keep watch. It means to watch like a watchman. All right. Uh, uh, you know, when, when you are a watchman set up on the wall, it means that you are a guard. You are taking guardian. All right. The Lord says that you, uh, I am your hiding place. He is our hiding place and he will preserve you. 
which means that when you come into the place of intimacy, He will preserve your life. He will watch your life. He will stand on guard. He will stand on guard and be a watchman and He will protect you. He will preserve you, which means that a watchman sees the things that's coming. A watchman is up on an elevated, exalted place on a watchtower. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower that the righteous run to it and they are saved. So it means that uh, if you're in Christ, because He is our hiding place, we are hidden in the Lord. That's what the Bible says. We're hidden in the Lord, but there are realms and dimensions for us to be even more hidden in the greater glory, the third dimension, the third heavens. You follow me? So when we're hidden in Christ, then the Bible says that He will watch over you. He will be a preserver of your life, which means that He's elevated to a place so He will see the enemies that are coming. He will give you insight. He will give you oversight. He will give you sight. He will give you vision to see what's coming from a distance. He will see it. He will cause you to not be blind, but to have revelation and to have vision. And He will see the tsunamis that are coming. He will see the tragedies that are coming. That's why the Bible says in the Old Testament that he, God does nothing on the earth unless He first reveals it to His prophets. He will do nothing on the earth unless He first reveals it to His prophets, to His company of people who are an ear to hear heaven and are a mouth to release the decree on earth. He does nothing on earth unless He first reveals it to the prophets. So let me ask you this. Are you listening? Are you watching? Christ Jesus is our hiding place. And I believe the Lord wants to throw His robe over us and on us so that He will hide us in His glory and He will give us vision and He will preserve our lives. Someone say amen. He will guard us. He will watch over us. He will be faithful over us. The same word in the Hebrew, uh, uh, preserve, it means that He keeps us in loving kindness. He is a Father. He's a King. His presence covers over us like a shelter, like a fortress, like a stronghold. And He preserves us with love kindness if you believe that someone say amen keep following me verse 7 you shall surround me with songs of deliverance I love this songs of deliverance follow me here songs of deliverance which means that there are songs over you follow me if you if you are hidden in Christ he is your hiding place the realm of glory then that means that there are angels all around you and angels are surrounding you and are singing songs. Listen, songs release deliverance. Songs release healing. Songs release breakthrough. That's why the Bible says, sing to the Lord a new song. Because a new song uttered by the Spirit of God decrees of a new season that's at hand. And there are angels that surround the King in the presence of the Lord. And when you're hidden in Christ, the angelic, the Lord of hosts, Surround you. Someone say amen. The Lord of hosts surrounds you, which means that the atmosphere of angels are swirling around you, which means that there are songs of worship, songs of deliverance. So that's why sometimes when people get into spontaneous moments of singing, spontaneous moments of singing psalms and spiritual hymns, that's what the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says. When you get into those moments, you're singing, releasing songs of deliverance, which means that in that moment, God's giving you a key to break through. God's giving you a word of knowledge, a key to release deliverance. God's giving you a key because if you have access to Him, you will decode those things to the world. You will reveal, you will unveil those things to the earth. So when you begin to sing, when you're in the presence, you will be surrounded with songs of deliverance. Someone say amen here. Songs of deliverance. I'm going to go a little deeper here. Songs of deliverance. Uh, uh, many people in the Hebrew, they believe that it's actually God who sings over us. Uh, uh, the rabbis believe that when God, in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God spoke the worlds into being. In fact, God didn't say it. He sang it. Sing it, brother. Sing it, sister. He sang it. So the Hebrews believe that God the Creator, He sang the world into creation. 
Because there's a frequency of heaven that's released in your singing, not just in your speaking. In your singing. So therefore, I believe that it's God who sings his songs over you. It's Christ Jesus himself who's singing songs of love and deliverance and healing and holiness around you. Because God our Father, he sings. The Bible says in the, uh, in the Hebraic culture that when the bride is married to the groom, the groom will surround and will sing around the groom. Are you following me? In that day of the wedding banquet, in that day of the feast of the wedding, the bride will sit at the center and the groom will dance around the bride, you and I. And the groom will sing songs to her in a loud praise of the beauty and the glory of what's taken place. So I believe songs of deliverance. God is singing. God is thundering. God is releasing. Someone say amen. God is singing songs of deliverance from his heart to you. And I believe it is His presence that will deliver you. Follow me here. Psalm 32. This psalm here, it's many times alluded to David after he sinned. Has anybody sinned? Has anybody fallen short from the glory of God? Has anybody sinned? But David, after he sinned and, uh, with Bathsheba, afterwards he began to write this psalm. And he said, Lord, where else can I go? Where else can I go but your presence? Who else do I have but you, Lord? And David realized once again that he needed to stay hidden in the Lord. He needed to stay so close to God. He needed Christ to be his covering, to be his abode, to be his hiding place. He needed to be hidden in the Lord and not hidden in the flesh. Not doing hidden and secret things and sin. He needed to stay hidden in the presence of the Lord rather than being hidden in sin and in flesh and in shame. But David knew after he fell in sin with Bathsheba, he needed to be hidden in the Lord. Christ Jesus is my hiding place and he will preserve you. I guarantee you, I guarantee this to you, people of God. If Christ is your covering, he will not expose you. He is safe. He will keep you hidden under the realm of glory. He is your security. He is your strong tower. You can rest in Him no matter what comes through, no matter what comes by. Although the tsunami waves all around you are trying to cause you to fall off of your boat and off of the rhythm of the peace and the pace of your life. The Lord will keep you strong and secure in His bosom and in His glory. Hide in Him, people of God, and don't try to step out of him don't try to step ahead of him don't try, try to step ahead and out of the will of God that is dangerous that is uh, that is just so destructive stay in his presence and he will not let you go I'm gonna bring this to a close here Psalm uh, 31 I love this you're gonna like the Psalm 31 verse 20 you shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man you shall Keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. I'm going to read that again. This is the Psalmist David reading it out. You will hide them in the secret place of your presence, God, from the plots of man. From the plots and plans of the devil. From the plots of man. From the controversies. From the gossips. From the slanders. From the plans, from the evil, wicked intentions of people, and they don't even know it. You will hide me from the plots of man, which means that you will be untouchable. You will be unreachable, which means that even if they try to compete against you or they were trying to compete against you, they could not because you are untouchable. Because if you hide yourself in the secret place of the presence of the Lord, then the plots of man and of the devil, the schemes of the enemy, the strategic planning of the warfare of the, the hordes of hell cannot touch you, cannot not come near you because the secret place is the secret of success the secret place the hiding place 
being covered in the glory of God, being having access to the inmost place of the Lord. Rabba Sombo. It is a place where no plots, strategies, plans of the world of the devil. Listen, I know that there's war going on in Israel. It's real. I know that there's war going on in Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, uh, all these places. But doesn't matter what's happening in the world, people of God. If you stay hidden and secure and you're led by the voice, by the glory, the authority of Jesus, you will be safe, you will be secure, and no devil, no eye can touch you. Catch this. You will keep them secretly in a pavilion. Someone say hallelujah. You will keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. From the strife of tongues. What does the Apostle James say in the book of James? It says that the tongue is like the rudder of a ship. It can either cause fire to a whole forest or it can turn the rudder of a ship towards a different course. The Lord is silencing the accuser now. The Lord, the God of hosts, is silencing the tongues and the strifes of the devil of the enemy. He's silencing the accuser now by the blood of the Lamb and by the songs of deliverance and of the angelic hosts of God that are surrounding you, Roboso, and that are abounding out from you. The Lord is protecting you and preserving you from these things. If you believe that, say amen. I'm going to jump over here to Psalm, hallelujah, to Psalm 17 verse 8 keep me as the apple of your eye hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me keep me as the apple of your eye hide me under the shadow of your wings i'm going to teach you and i'm going to bring it to a close keep me as the apple of your eye what does jesus say the eye is the lamp of your whole body if your eyesight is good, then your whole body will be good. If your eyes fill with light, then your body will be filled with light. The eye gates, eye gates, eye gates. Come on now, somebody. Eye gate, eye gates. What you watch, you will worship. What you watch, you will become. Eye gate, protect your eye gate. What are you watching? CNN or are you watching Jesus? What are you watching? Bad news or heavenly news? What are you watching? The catastrophe and all of the turmoil of the world or are you watching Jesus, the eternal, secure, seated one in the throne, in the heavenly places of the finished work of God? What are you watching? And the Psalmist David says, keep me as the apple of your eye keep me as the apple of your eye follow me here the most precious keep me as the most precious thing in your sight lord keep me as the center of your gaze i want to have dove's eyes keep me as the apple of your eye. hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me i'm gonna teach and i'm gonna bring this to close the apple of your eye what does that mean it means your very pupil it means the center of your sight. Let me ask you this. If I if I hit your eye, pluck your eye, what's going to be your reaction? If I pluck your eye, what's going to be your reaction? You're probably going to push me off. Defend yourself. You're going to cuss. You're going to yell. You're going to probably try to slap me. Defend. If I try to... Your eye, what are you going to do? And the, and the psalm is saying, I am the apple of your eye. And if any devil tries to touch the apple of his eye, you, then he's going to... Them. If any devil, if any person, if any entity, if any organization tries to touch the apple of the eye of God, and we have seen this with the Jewish people, Hitler, the devil, Babylon, the Medes, whatever, so many people have tried to pluck the apple of God's eye. 
which are the Jewish people, and you and I are as well, have to try to plug the apple of God's eye, the Jewish people, on what happened. They came back stronger. They came back richer. They came back more prosperous. The Bible says they left sevenfold, seven times over. They left Egypt. Come on now. Even though they don't like you because you got a song, you got a voice, your spirit agitates their devils, your presence makes them uncomfortable. There's something about you, even when you were in Egypt that they didn't want you, they didn't like you, so therefore they tried to oppress you even more, but still God favored you, still God blessed you, still God chose you, and therefore the devil couldn't do anything about it, and the jealous and insecure people cannot try to demote you because God is the one who promoted you, so therefore because you are the apple of his eye, so therefore he says, if you touch my eye, if you try to do something to the gaze of my eye, then I'm going to take you out. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Keep me as an apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Someone say amen. There's this whole repetition here about Christ Jesus being our hiding place. Thank you. Jehovah Nisi, which means that the Lord God is my banner. Which means that the banner, which is not just a flag, all right, which... The banner, which stands for authority, it stands for a hallmark. The banner actually stands for his prayer shawl, his talits. That's what Psalm 91 says. That you will keep me hidden under the shadow of your wings. What are wings? Is God an eagle? Is God a bird that he has wings and he drinks Red Bull because he thinks he can fly? No, 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 no. The wings stand for the prayer shawl that he wears. As he enters the Holy of Holies, the secret place, face to Yah. And it it's represents the prayer shawl that he wears. And if you stay hidden under that place, then you will be healed. If you stay near him, then you will be whole. If you stay hidden and under that place, then you will become. And God is saying, I want to keep you as an apple of my eye. Where you're preserved, where you're kept, where you're guarded, where you're watched over. It's the hiding place of the Lord. It's the secret place of His presence that God wants to give you access. It's a secret because not many can find it. It's a secret because no devils can ever find it. It's a secret because He wants to reveal the secret to those whom He can trust. Can He trust you? Like I said earlier in the beginning of this Facebook Live broadcast, concealed weapons permit. Can he trust you to handle the permit? Can he trust you to have access to the greater glory, to the greater room? Can he trust you so that you can have access to the secret place? Christ Jesus is my hiding place. I'm going to bring this to a close here. Wherever you're in life, people of God. Maybe in a high, and a low, in a valley, in a mountain, wherever you are, in Los Angeles, in Mississippi, in Tennessee, uh, in New York, in India, in Alabama, wherever you are, come back to this main thing, which is intimacy with God. The reason why people sin, the reason why people fail, the reason why people uh, become something that God never wanted them to be is because they've left the importance of the secret place is because they've gone out from the covering they've gone out from the leading they've ran ahead of god in a spirit of presumption and assumption which is idolatry that's what the bible says so they've ran ahead of him and the lord wants you to be hidden under the shadow the cabo the glory of his presence that's where things are revealed to you and that's where things will be safe and it will be sound. Run to Him, people of God. Run to Him. That's where songs of deliverance are. Someone say, Amen. I want to pray and I'm going to release you. I love you guys. Father, I pray for all my friends that are watching now and on the replay. I pray today that the sweet presence of Jesus, which gives rest to our soul, the manifest presence of Yahweh, uh, which protects, which watches over, which watches guard, which preserves. I pray, God... I hear the Lord saying, you do not need to worry and you do not need to stress. You do, there is no such thing as stress in heaven. There is no such thing as anxiety in heaven. There's no such thing as anxiety. That's what the Bible says. If, are you anxious? Pray. 
There is no such thing as anxiety in heaven and stress in heaven. That's a demonic warfare trying to cause you to lose your peace. But Father, I pray that today, all of my friends watching now in a replay, you would experience the surrounding, surpassing, preeminent, uh, providential, the beautiful, powerful presence of Jesus, and that we would experience Jesus being our hiding place. Let your finances be hidden in Him. Let your relationships be hidden in Him. Let your doings be hidden in Him. Let your intentions be hidden in Him. Let your future endeavors and plans be hidden in Him. And if you are hidden in the Holy Spirit, then the plots of man and the tongues of the devil cannot touch you. It will not stray off course and it will not be steered and veered off track and away. But it will be protected by the power and the presence of God. Christ Jesus is my hiding place and i believe in this time and this season the lord wants to wrap around you and he's inviting you to the more and he's inviting you up higher and deeper and into him god bless you friends i love all of you shalom to you and may you experience christ being your hiding place may we be hidden in christ and not be hidden in ourselves not be hidden in sin and not be hidden in our flesh it's time for the prophets to come out of the caves your due time is up don't be hidden in yourself, in fear. Be hidden in Christ Jesus. God bless.